Crossroads Media. You just got embarrassed by the Mets in game one. After Zach Wheeler throws the gemmest gem to ever gem. 30 swing and misses. You can't make that up. When you see it on the stat sheet, you go, what? This is going to be equivalent to when Wilt dropped 100 points in an NBA game and nobody even believed it was real. That's how sexy of an effort that was. Iglesias, it's a double play. He's bitching because of a 2-0 count where he's flailing, thinking he's going to get hit nonstop. So when the 2-0 pitch comes in and it's close to the inside part of the plate, of course the up behind the dish is going to call it a strike because of the stupid antics that you were doing. But I digress. None of that is as cool as it was in the moment, watching Wheeler get out of some trouble. Throw it 98-99 nonstop. Fastball was electric, but don't get me started on the split. Sensational. While the Mets threw a guy who hasn't been healthy all year. Outside of Kyle Schwarber's leadoff bomb, you did absolutely nothing against him. And then they go six plus and change with the damn bullpen. You were an effective lick. Rojas gets on base after working a tremendous at bat in the fifth to walk. He gets to second base, goes nowhere. I thought Marsh was going to get one to right field when Stott was on second to give us a boost to add insurance to get a 3-0 lead, but it died at the wall. My number one blame for this game in particular, while everybody is in the crosshairs of criticism, Because Nick was chasing again. It was so dumb, dumb to swing at some of those pitches. And same with Trey Turner. Both of them offensively made me sick. So did Alec Bohm in that little late surge they had in the eighth. When they had first and third, Bryce gets the double. Nick gets the single through the infield. My man is hacking at a 90 mile per hour pitch over the heart of the plate and does diddly squat dick with it. Unacceptable. While the offense is a huge target and has to change or else this thing is over, I am more disappointed in the bullpen. And this is my logic. This is the playoffs. You're not competing against the Washington Nationals anymore. This isn't the Marlins. Although the Marlins will probably bend you over and you'd lose by six knowing how they take care of business against you. But I digress. You have to show up and compete and win tight games. If it was five to four and you needed six outs, that's the same to me if it's one nothing and you need six outs. At some point, when you get to the eighth or ninth, the meat and potatoes are done. You are in a position. You're up one. Get the job done. If it's seven six, get the job done. If it's 8-7, get the job done. If it's 3-2, get the job done. If it's one nothing, get the job done. And the most irritating part about it is when you go to your best arms, Hoffman is winning. He's getting ahead in the count. Oh, two. Put him away. Execute. Same with Strom. Nine hole hitter. Lindor. It's unacceptable how that eighth shaped out. Unacceptable. 
and your bullpen can't implode that brutally. Look, if by the end of the day, the Mets scored one run in the eighth, they tie it up, and then it's a fresh new slate, and it starts then and there, I get it. You can't shut out a team forever. But you got exposed and attacked and crucified. And now, they know they can get to you. This is deflating. You used Kirkering as well. And hell, we live in a world where I got in game one of the playoffs the equivalent to Garrett Stubbs pitching. That's Tanner Banks. I guess you can make the argument that Colby Allard would be Garrett Stubbs, but Tanner Banks has no business being in a position ever that matters in the postseason. So when he's in, that means the game's all tied in a bow. I just prefer it be a maybe because the fills are up 7 nothing, Not getting their teeth kicked in. Here's the Mets, tack it on runs late. What's up with this new NFL rule? We got over at second base, by the way, with Bryson Stott bobbling the ball after the, the tag was already applied. Not that it matters, but watching that run score didn't make me feel any better in the moment. Just more pathetic. That's as bad as it gets for a game one at home. Coming off the bye, talking a big game about not necessarily the time off, but not falling into the same trap that you fell into in previous years. And was Rob? And when Rob was asked about it after the game, he was asked, was it more of what the Mets were doing? Was it more of what you were doing just on a personal basis with the approach? Said probably a combination of both. Well, that's terrible. Because the whole league knows how to go after you. And you're even falling back into it and falling for the tricks. So you better get your head out of your ass. Because it comes down to game two. Big spot for Christopher Sanchez. There's a lot of Phillies fans down and out. Saying this series is done. I'm not one of them. But game two is as big as it gets for not only the starter, which is a huge position for him to go into, but also for this lineup. And I wasn't as down as everyone else was in the middle of the game. I didn't think automatic loss because of the way wheels was going. I actually believed even knowing the identity and the DNA of this Mets team and how they scrap back, I had faith in Hoffman and Strom to get six outs. They didn't need nine. Wheels going through that seventh was monstrous. Now his pitch count was getting up there. And if you're a fool, and if you're an idiot, you're mad at Rob for pulling Zach. Believe it or not, my mentions are getting blown up right now. Shocker. The amount of individuals that wanted wheels to keep going. No, that's managerial malpractice. Truth be told, I'm worried about his next start if we even get there and how this can affect his pitch count and the distance he can throw. Well, I mean, at that point, the season's on the line. To be fair, if this thing goes five, still a chance for it to go four. Then we're in a totally different discussion. We'll we'll worry about that path when we get there. But my point is that pitch count was going through the roof. Even with the tremendous win. That's why you got to get this one. He did all that and lost. You used all your high leverage guys and lost. Now I have to feel good about potentially Hoffman again tomorrow. Knowing the pressure. Knowing the fans. Knowing the fact that. Yo, there's no playing games, dude. Now's the time. If you throw a ball or throw two balls, now it's 2-0 count. You can feel everybody stressing out. And he's got to overcome that adversity as well as focusing in on the moment. 
and actually nailing down his pitches. But where was this offense? Where's Bryce Harper? Where's Castellanos? Where's Trey Turner? Where is JT Romito? Where's Alec Bohm? This offense, once again, in key moments, goes silent. Like they did in games six and seven of the NLCS last year, like they did in games four, five, and six of the World Series last year, it's the same damn thing all over again. This offense goes mute. I'm not blaming Bryce Harper. I can't blame Bryce Harper. When you get walked two times and then you have the double, it's pretty obvious they said someone else have at it. Someone else have at it. They weren't even, you know, at, at times it was just balls. I think they were saying that he wasn't swinging in the first 10 pitches or so. Maybe I have that stat wrong, but uh, he walked twice and ten of the nine of the pitches he didn't even swing at, you know. <laughs> Yo, Nick, go after Nick. You keep bringing up all these names, right? Boom or Nick or Trey. Go get them. They're easy to get. Go get them. I'll put Bryce on. Go ahead, at first. A walk won't beat us. And they were right. I'm just saying, in theory, put Bryce on and go after all these other names. Besides maybe Kyle. Everybody else is most likely going to fail. And that's their approach. So I can't really blame Bryce, but everybody else, fair. This is where I get myself into the debate with the ones that look at this team and look at the last couple of years and say the offense going quiet is who they are. Because there is truth to that. Oh, I sit here and watch every damn game just like all of you. I say it. I know they go through peaks and they go through valleys. With that said, though, what you do when you bring that up is forget how great the offense is. Like, we're talking about them failing last year. One win away from the World Series. This is their first playoff game of the year. Two years ago, you're talking about the offense going quiet when it's game six and game... Oh, they got no hit. I don't want to speak about it. But we're talking about the World Series. That's... The wild card, NLDS, NLCS, and the fourth series back in 2022 before it, quote, fell apart and they got quiet. There is a massive upside to this offense that I don't despise. I can't say, like, well, this is who they are. But, like, not really. Like, yes, it does happen, but it's happened four series into it, three series into it. It's game one. We're just getting started. There's a flip side to their quietness that they show a lot of the time to get deep into the playoffs two years in a row.